Live from San Francisco, it's The Q. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with The Q. We're on the ground at Pier 48 in San Francisco at the Top Coder Open 2014. An event that's been going on for about uh, 14 years where they get a bunch of smart people together, they try to solve hard problems, kind of like a hackathon. Uh, it's a cool event, but we came up for another reason. This year, for the first time ever, they put together basically uh, a program to help high school girls focus on STEM. They got together a panel of, of women in the technology industry that are uh, come from lots of different walks of life, set them down in front of 200 high school girls from San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland, the East Bay, the Peninsula to really talk about their journey in technology and, and really help these girls visualize them getting involved in this uh, in this this path. So we're really excited. We've got the whole panel on. Jeffrina, Pack and Nathan, yes. thanks for stopping by. Oh, I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. So your day job, you work at a Piro. I do. But you're also still a student. I, I'm very much a student. I've got homework due today. Yeah. you got homework due today. <laughs> But I thought what you brought to the panel that was very different than anyone else was really kind of the human factors. Yeah. Um, and I thought your example of House, the TV show, uh, to really show these girls how they can bring a, lots of different disciplines together to solve problems is really great. Right. And uh, I, I always think about what makes House a good doctor. And he really, he looks at the patient and he doesn't just look at the results of a blood test. He might, you know, break into their house and see what they're eating or see if they're cheating on their wife. And, and it's using information about the patient outside of their medical history that makes them a good doctor. And I was thinking, what makes me a good um, computer scientist? And it's having information from sociology and psychology and anthropology, philosophy, all these other fields, and learning about how humans work and how we think and how we behave. That makes me a better developer and a better designer. And I have to say, I think I think there's not enough of that in most design. I think you know people talk about the, the technology a lot. They don't focus enough on the people, they don't focus enough on the process. The other thing I think that was really important for that is to really make it real for these girls to understand that you watch a regular TV show yep. that they can relate to and it ties back to potentially his great career in tech um, and really kind of humanize this whole thing. Right, and it's very important for me to, to show the girls that, you know, if you want to get into technology, it's not just about, you know, taking a computer science class and learning how to program. You can take a Photoshop class and a graphic design class and implemented in mobile development or you can take a physics class and use it in gaming development it's it's getting to experience from all these other fields but ultimately that scientific uh, and the programming and technical core is what will essentially help you in the future now, now the other thing you brought up that was kind of a, a cute story was your dad you know looking to your little brother instead of you to help around the house on some of the technical right. issues and you just said I'm not I'm not taking that anymore yeah so talk a little bit about that part of your personality is that something that, that you carry forward? Have you used that uh, in classes? You know, talk about, you know, basically having kind of a, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to learn, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, um, and a lot of people underestimate girls and think that we're not good enough or, yeah, if I'm a girl, I don't know how to fix a computer or I don't know how this TV works and that, you know, pissed me off. <laughs> and uh, I was always like, you know what, I can fix this too. I can build stuff and I can program and I can code just as good as any of the guys in my classroom. And that's what I did. I took my first um, programming class in 10th grade and I took Java and C++ and I took web development classes. I got, I took my A plus exam in my senior year in high school and got that certification. My dream job was to work at Geek Squad when I was in high school. Uh, I know. <laughs> and I really wanted to prove that you know what I can do the things that all the other guys in my class could and I'm just as equal as they are so when did it morph from I've got to prove my dad wrong so I can fix the stuff around the house and I'm gonna learn programming as a sophomore in high school to wow I really like this I've got a passion I've got a skill this is something I'd like to do in my career I think that really happened once I got to college in high school it was still like um, I'm learning everything but once I could do some of those research projects in college and actually have my code be 
implemented somewhere. And some of my internships where you can see physically how you're affecting other people, that's when it really clicked. And you get that, the human interaction and you can talk to the clients and get your requirements and see that if I built a website in my class, in college is where that website went live and other people were using that website. And, right. and you could get that feedback. That's when it became real for Which me. is interesting because that's consistent with what Maria Claudia from Harvey Mudd said is that the stuff kind of up until college is building a foundation, but really where girls have an opportunity to get the passion, to really get the bug, and, and to really go forward in this is in is in college. Yeah, for sure. It's those internship opportunities. And my mom always said, if you're going to get a job, don't get a job doing retail or, you know, serving ice cream or something. Always get a job that you know you can get some experience to put on your resume. And that's what I did. I interned at Goodwill in their technical department, and that was what I did for the summer. Um, I interned doing an iPhone app at, at Prometric. And and it's, it's those kind of real world experience. Like, I'm not building iPhone apps today, but it's getting that technical experience that's helped me get to where I am today. Right, right. So talk about mentorship and, and the girls today and what this type of a program means. Uh, I actually went to a program like this when I was 16 years old. I did. Where? At the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They have an event very similar to this, hosted by the Center for Women and Information Technology. And the event was called Bits and Bytes. And it was a programming competition for high school girls. And I was one of the 16 that got selected. And I went and I won. And oh, <laughs> so was that before or after you took your first CS class as a sophomore? It was right after. About the same it, was, time? it was right around the same time. Okay. I was 16. I think I took my my first class when I was 15. Okay. Um, but it was really like we got to do a contest and and play with you know video game design kind of. We got to build like a 3D virtual world like Sims. And I was just in high school and uh, that, being able to see what other other girls in college were being were doing and that it was really a great experience for me and that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. Awesome. <laughs> so what do you think of the girls here? I'm I'm very glad. A lot of them they're so smart that some of the questions they ask you're like really I wasn't that smart when I was that young um, but they're really interested especially the seniors and the juniors are thinking about what they want to major in in college I even had one girl ask me how to balance um, school life and work life together which is definitely difficult but it's it, I can see that she's thinking about that she wants to go to to work and go to school at the same time right so. right that's right because you're still at school so they picked up yep. on that so it's really a great indicator that they're paying attention exactly. they're listening they're taking this very seriously and they're asking real questions. Exactly. Awesome. So I'll give you the last word since you were the beneficiary <laughs> of a program like this. Now you're giving back. What other organizations is there one or two that you'd like to highlight that you participate in or you think is especially great that people should get involved with? Sure. There's the Center for Women and in Information Technology at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Um, in the larger Maryland area there is MDWIT, which is Maryland Women in Technology. And they, they're both offering good programs for high school girls to just get out there and you know not be afraid and underestimate yourselves and think that only the guys can do this. You right. know, we're just as good. And if I want to build stuff, I'm going to learn how to build stuff. Love it. <laughs> well, Jeffrey, and thanks for stopping uh, by. Thanks for having and Thanks me. for giving back. And really thanks for being, you know, kind of a poster child for someone who was fortunate enough to get some of this early right. on and really take advantage of now giving back, coming full circle. So super. I'm happy to be here. Thank you.